My name is Tommy Dykes, uh, President Certified Heating and Cooling. We started the company in 2006. We're a HVAC provider in Southwest Florida, so uh, residential, commercial, um, and uh, what we're about, blue ribbon service every time. So uh, we try to honestly provide the level of service that the customers can't find anywhere else. So a uh, good warranty program, stand behind our work, honest craftsmanship, and uh, we ask for five-star reviews on everything. We have almost 1,600 on Google this morning. That's great. Yeah. What's your average? Star, average. your star. Oh, average. We're four point nine stars right now. That's pretty so, good. That's, that's yeah, pretty good. Every now and then we get one that's upset with us, but we do our best to go back and make it right. And uh, you know, the entire population isn't sane. So I understand. We <laughs> and, when, and we want some honesty there anyway. <laughs> there, right. So speaking about honesty, you know what? What can you honestly tell us are some of the best ways that people thinking about hurricanes? Yeah. Uh, thinking about storm storm watch and hurricane preparation. Mm -hmm. What are some of the best ways that people can prepare their homes and or their businesses for a storm like that? Right. So I can tell you some of the stuff that we saw, obviously, just two years ago during a yeah. hurricane. Um, one of the biggest things we saw was actual physical damage to the outdoor unit. Mm. Um, people don't think about it, but that unit actually is a, a big sail sitting out there and mm. uh, properly securing that down. So we have a code is actually we're supposed to have hurricane straps on. Right. A lot of older units don't have those, or the unit was moved at one time and it never properly put them back on or something like okay. that. So properly securing that outdoor unit down. Um, single family home, but then also a lot of condos and things like that where the units are on the roof, yeah. experience a high wind mode. Commercial so, buildings. Commercial buildings. Well, you know, residential condos and things like that. So one, it sounds very simple, but properly securing that unit down to wherever it's sitting. Because once it tips over, rips the copper, rips the electrical, now you're done. Yeah. So that's an easy step to take. Uh, another thing that's uh, pretty easy to do is surge protection. Uh, okay. You know, as that hurricane's rolling in, the wires are moving around, things start shorting out, going in and out fast. So you want some sort of surge protection on that unit. Uh, you know, we all have TVs and computers, and what's the first thing we do? We put a surge protector battery backup on it. Yep. You got, you know, uh, potentially $10,000 system sitting out there. You want that surge protection on there for protected against that stuff. Uh, another good point I can make is a uh, time delay on your unit. So right. like I was just explaining to you, a uh, time delay is nothing but a unit that when, um, when your system shuts off, it prevents it from turning back on for five minutes. Okay. This allows the pressures to regulate within the system before jamming that compressor back on and potentially locking that compressor up and then having issues there. So can you, can you tell us a little bit about why that would be important? Especially uh, here in Florida where we have a lot of yeah, so even not in a hurricane situation, everybody knows Florida Power and Light, every now and then we get these power blips. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like on day to today, everything's running perfect, units on, life's great, the power will go out for two seconds. Yes. Well, what we want that time delay to do is intercept that and shut the unit down for five minutes, yeah. allow time for it to cool and gotcha. pressures to regulate before that unit's allowed to turn back on. So especially before a hurricane preceding it, you get a lot of those powers in and out. You want that that time delay built in. Okay. Um, another thing that uh, you know before a hurricane you could do is also is uh, uh, you could physically protect your outdoor unit. Um, okay. So uh, you know it, it, you can't do it while the unit's running, but you can you know put some plywood around it or things like. If you got a bunch of trees with branches, you're worried about uh, airborne projectiles hitting that oil. You kind of want to protect that. Um, Another thing that uh, some of our savvy customers did was before the hurricanes, actually turn that thermostat down quite cold. Okay. Cool your home off before the storm. Okay. And then, you know, when things are really getting crazy, you can go over and turn that unit off. Okay. And actually, you know, prevent some of this power spikes, surges, all that stuff from happening. Um, and believe it or not, one of the, we saw multiple units destroyed um, when a tree next to the unit actually fell the opposite way. And the roots lifted the unit. Up oh gosh! And flipped God. it out of the way. We saw. I can't believe how many. We have picture after picture, and you know we're like there was no branches here, and it looked good, but then the tree fell, and actually the roots were rather. Yeah, good. tipped the unit over. So you know, that's, I guess that would go along with your home as well, protecting your home um, from those trees. Um, post hurricane. Yeah, good. Um, you know, good yeah, yeah it, we saw a lot of customers, and they would call us, "Hey, my unit's not working." You know, I think everything's okay. And we would go out there and the unit was actually tipped over, blown um, over. A stick was jammed. Is it so run when it's tipped over? It can sometimes. Yes. In a good way or a bad way? A very bad way. God. Yeah, you do not want that. Uh, there's oils in the compressor. That compressor needs to be upright. Okay. Um, 
A lot of times what we saw, though, was that the unit was mostly intact. A stick had fallen and damaged the fan blade. Okay. And then either the fan blade physically destroyed everything in there, where the fan couldn't spin. Now it can't get rid of the heat. And the unit, you know, sat there and burned a compressor up or something like that. Curious, just because I'm curious. <laughs> When that kind of stuff happens, how does insurance take that? How does your warranty affect it? Right. So we saw a lot of warranty denies um, post hurricane. Um, they said if it was hurt, you know, so a manufacturer warranty, they yeah. won't cover acts of God. Okay. So they don't do that. So um, had we been able to intercept a lot of that, mm. the, the claim would have been much smaller. The damage would have been a lot right. smaller to that unit. Um, and then not only that, we can help the homeowner mitigate. Uh, and a lot of that stuff. And, and, and I'm just curious. So there's there's the package units mm -hmm. and there's the ones who are separated. Correct. So how is that affected when hurricanes happen? Or if... um, So on a, on a split system, you're going to have the condenser outside, the air handler somewhere inside the home. Yeah. Um, the split systems... Is that I... only always for residential? No. A lot of commercial units will have that as well. So they'll have big split systems or package units. Most of the construction we see here on a commercial unit will be uh, package units. Yeah. Um, and they tend to be the ones that take a little bit more of a beating during the hurricane. It's a much bigger unit, much bigger yeah. footprint and sale. And the curbs that those guys go on, while they're engineered for hurricane wind loads, they don't seem to hold up near as well as like a split system. Load. You mentioned straps earlier. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that a layman, a no known person can do sure. in order to strap their stuff down? Sure. So what we use are steel L straps. Um, all every unit should have it by code. Um, right. So I would say, you know, if you go out, you can just inspect those. You know, um, sometimes the screws will rust out. Like I said, sometimes there's been a remodel and they got moved and somebody just didn't put those back. So yeah. So anybody can go out, look at it, check the straps, make sure they're there. Um, you got to be really careful putting screws into the unit so you don't damage the coil. Uh, if there was existing screw holes there and screws, you can, you know, see what those were, yeah. reuse those and make sure those straps are good. Um, the other thing we do too on a lot of our high rises is we'll put additional strapping over the unit. Yeah. Uh, we'll use a uh, stainless steel cable with like a uh, plastic sleeve on it. And that's just another layer of security on there to keep that unit from tipping over. I've got to we get those winds. Again, just because I'm curious. Yeah. When you have those straps that are going over top of the unit, mm -hmm. does that affect the actual AC output no. at all? No, it doesn't. Because most units said they have a grate on top anyways. Right. Yeah. So the cables were running. I mean, even a quarter inch stainless steel cable is rated at like 6,000 pounds or something like yeah. that. Most units so even have right. something like that. Yeah. Like it's in, so it's so small running over the top. Now, yes, you wouldn't want to use a big metal flat strap or something. Yeah. They start interfering with. Well, that's when uh, you say straps, I think that. Yeah. No, I say strap. We're just using uh, cables. Okay. All right. We got you. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So after a hurricane, um, what can people do? Can, what can businesses do? Sure. And who should they call? Okay. So after the storm, like I said, physically inspect the unit. You don't want something like a damaged fan blade destroying the rest of the unit. Right. Um, or if a stick is simply sticking, you could pull it out. Just make sure the unit looks physically okay. Um, then following that, clean power is going to be your issue. Um, so we saw, I don't know what that means. Well, generators, you know, so you're running, um, you know, a generator that's not sufficient to run the unit. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's just not putting out the run starting amps that your unit needs. Sure. So we've seen a lot of compressor damage running off of a, a generator does what wasn't less than enough. Yeah. Less than enough. And the unit just sat there and tried to start back and forth and burn components out of the unit. Um, so that being said, we actually have a couple products. There's, um, a product called a soft start. So it's a really smart unit that sits inside that's installed on your outdoor unit that'll monitor the uh, power input coming in mm -hmm. and then match the the sine wave of the power if you will and step that compressor in kind of slowly and yeah. takes that load off the generator okay so we have some products that'll help tremendously run a unit off a generator right. so that would be a, another item um how much watch. how much pull is a is an ac unit on a generator ah uh, it's massive so uh, the the and and what's funny about an AC is it's only that start once it started once we get them running the ignition yeah yeah they they actually come way down so you know folks will buy a generator oh let's be you know my my AC and it's only so many amps well that start load is way more than that. it's way more. is there a percentage that it is more than that usually it varies by unit yeah you know, but um, I mean I would say it's 
on average, probably triple what the run Gosh. is. Yeah, they can spike extremely high, yes. especially when it's hot outside. We got it's high direct cars, obviously. Yes, exactly. Um, so we have some of these products that can help. Um, so you want to make sure you get good power to it, a good generator. Um, you don't want a generator that's had bad gas in it for years. That's out there revving up and down. Thing. I mean, we, you know, we see stuff like that. Um, another piece of advice I can, maybe your generator is big enough to barely run your home. So when you fire that generator back up, don't just slam your main on and let everything Everything in the house turn back on. So maybe even selectively, you know, leave some items off, but then as you're stepping in your appliances, turn one on, let it run for five minutes, move to the next one, turn it on. Don't just go on on for, yeah, because it's everything in the home trying to fire. Um, this is probably subjective, but I know people want comfort. Mm -hmm. And so in order to be comfortable, a lot of times in Florida, we need AC. Right. So what would you say is a good timing as far as, as far as those other units go and they're stepping up things fridge first. Like, what are we, what are we thinking? Well, sure. I mean, um, yeah, as you're going through, you're probably going to want to get your refrigerator back online and some of your lights, obviously for safety reasons. Yeah. And then if your home has multiple ACs, even at that point, depending on your generator size, you might just want to run the master bedroom side, leave the main system off drop, um, and let that dehumidify. Um, you know, uh, water heaters, you know, usually I'll recommend you leave those off. Yeah. Um, and I, I've even had to do it in homes that I had with generators where we ran the AC when we needed it. And then when it was shower time, shut the ACs down, turn the hot water heater on, yeah. kind of shed that load, depending on the generator size. And some whole home generators are, are more than capable of, of handling everything. Um, so yeah, so some of these products, we, we actually do a hurricane preparedness kit. That we'll come out, check. We'll do the time delay. We'll do the hurricane straps. Good, make yeah. sure everything's ready to go, and uh, you're as prepared as possible for the hurricane. In residential homes and in commercial buildings, I've seen people bring in those mobile ACs, mm-hmm. mobile air conditioning units. Sure. What do you think? They're a good idea. Um, they can work. We actually have portable units. Um, sometimes a window unit, if you're not. If you don't have the capability for a generator, you could put a little window unit in okay. and have that for just say your master bedroom or yeah. something like that. Um, you have to be prepared, obviously, because we all know what happens when a hurricane's coming. The generators all disappear, mm-hmm. and the portable AC units are are new. Bullet you know, yeah, you know, they're, <laughs> they're all gone. So it's one of those things. If you want to be prepared and have that, it's probably not a bad idea. Um, you know, we have a bunch here we have for our customers just in case they have outdoor damage. Yeah. Um, you know, logistically, you know, we saw it was about two weeks post storm before all of our vendors and suppliers were back up and running. Yeah. Now we carry a large inventory of in, in house things, but specific items for a specific manuscript. Like, <laughs> they've got to have it there. And not apparently, <laughs> uh, who, who knew? Uh, so, yeah. Okay. I understand. So, what are some of the ways that people can improperly prepare for a storm? Improperly prepare for a storm. They think it's going to be good and it's actually a bad thing to do. Well, with the HVAC, I think one of the worst things that you can do is as the storm's approaching, they just leave them on. Okay. You know, so that power is just banging in and out, in and out, in and out, which we normally see as the lines start before everything goes down. That's probably one of the biggest damage points that we see. Um, like I was talking about earlier, we saw a few customers, they tarped the unit to protect that, but then never took the tarp off. And then they kept running out. And then power came back on and, you know, damage was way worse than everybody thought. That was the last thing on their mind. Hell, they might've fled the area. They yeah. forgot about it. And then that thing's back on and just chug our way out there. So really physical inspection of that unit post storm, making sure you, you know, didn't do any of that stuff. I mean, if you tarp your unit uh, for protection and we're running mm-hmm. In order to run properly, that machine needs breathe. Yes, it has to breathe. It's a, it's a heat exchanger. It's basically yeah. taking heat from inside your home and dispersing it outside the home. So without that airflow, that unit cannot work yeah, properly. It's melt itself. It's gonna hit a high pressure switch if it has one, or if it doesn't have one, it's gonna run until the compressor's burned up. Yeah, but cool. Mm-hmm. Anything else you think that um, businesses and residences should know? Um, I, you know, like we talked through uh, surge protection's key, Time delay is key and physical security of that unit. Those are the three major things for a hurricane to protect on this. And then post storm, you know, have an idea of what you're going to do if you're running off generator, what's the load on that? Can your unit support it? 
And uh, do you have some products on there that help that unit run more efficiently afterwards? And all these products too, even not hurricane related, some of these soft start units that we have actually help it run more efficiently. Uh, okay. You know, you see sometimes you have a house and the AC unit kicks on the lights dim down a little bit. Yeah. That's that huge load on that unit. Yeah. So these products help year round, but especially in the you know, critical days post hurricane. Awesome. Well, tell us yeah. here with the end of Lurio Sign Off. All right. My name's Tommy, President, Certified Heating and Cooling. Uh, should you need anything, please give us a call, 239-482-5000. Been in business since 2006, and we're here to stay. I'm good. Thanks so much, Thank you. Appreciate it.